you saved your family and he kept your mind in perfect peace. Hold your hearts with love and give God some praise right here. Listen, we just going to give God some praise. We ask that you all join in with us in your car, Facebook Live, if you're listening, if you're watching, join in with us. We're just going to give God some praise. Is that all right? Is that all right? Come on, put your hands together while you're in your car. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Everybody sing and bless the Lord with me. Come on, say bless the Lord with me. Come on, bless the Lord, bless the Lord with me. We come to give Him praise.
just to think millions of you know, hundreds of years ago there was a savior by the name of Jesus who thought that he was so worth saving that he sacrificed his life that he gave up his freedom his wills his wants the fact that you can gather here in this parking lot today just to give God some praise or sit at home on Facebook live and and wave your hands in your living room it's because of a man named Jesus who thought that you was worth saving somebody give God some glory right here So you 
music me My soul is resting Oh, in that a blessing Oh, praise the Lord Hallelujah, we're free Amen. If you know that you are free, if you know that you've been bought by a price, go ahead and make some noise in this place. Come on, Mount Zion. We are just grateful to God for allowing us to assemble one more time. Amen. Anybody else glad to be in the number? Anybody else glad that you woke up this morning? Anybody else glad that the Lord started you on your way? We are Mount Zion AME Church in Goose Creek, South Carolina. I am Reverend Clinton McPherson, a very proud pastor of this church. And we just thank you for coming out to our praise in the parking lot. We thank you tuning in from home, from your job, wherever you may be. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And we just simply declare that this is the day that the Lord has made. And because the Lord has made this day, we shall rejoice. Anybody in here ready to rejoice? Anybody out here ready to rejoice? Anybody out here that determined to be glad? Are you determined to be glad? We are just grateful unto God. And so our praise and our, our praise and worship team will come before you again to lead us in song. Amen.
us pray. We thank you, dear God, for this day, and we thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity. Thank you, dear God, for allowing us to assemble once more and again. Dear God, we lift up those in the hour of bereavement, lift up those that are sick, and lift up those that are shut in. Lift up those that have been affected by this coronavirus. We lift up, Heavenly Father, those that are on the front line doing all that they can to protect us. Lift up, Heavenly Father, our leaders on every level. Continue to give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding to do what is right for everyone and not just what is right for a select few. Dear God, in all things, keep us mindful that you get the glory, that you get the worship, that you get the praise. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We claim victory in the name of Jesus. This is that servant prayer. Amen. Amen. Our scripture for today comes from 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, reading from the Common English Bible, 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and beginning at the first verse, it is unnecessary for me to write to you about this service for God's people. I know about your willingness to help. I brag about you to the Macedonians saying, Greece has been ready since last year and your enthusiasm has motivated most of them. But I'm sending the brothers so that I will bragging about you in this case won't be empty words. And so that you can be prepared, just as I keep telling them you will be. If some Macedonians should come with me and find out that you aren't ready, we would be embarrassed as far as this project goes. This is why I thought it was necessary to encourage the brothers to go to you ahead of time and arrange in advance the generous gift you have already promised. I want it to be a real gift from you. I don't want you to feel like you are being forced to give anything. What I mean is this, the one who sows a small number of seeds will also reap a small crop. And the one who sows a generous amount of seeds will also reap a generous crop. Everyone should give whatever they have decided in their heart. They shouldn't give with hesitation or because of pressure. God loves a cheerful giver. God has the power to provide you with more than enough of every kind of grace. That way you will have everything you need always and in everything to provide more than enough for every kind of work. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Amen. Our praise and worship team will come before us again.
you need. Our God has got it. Second Corinthians, the ninth chapter and the eighth verse. Second Corinthians, the ninth chapter and the eighth verse says, God has the power to provide you with more than enough of every kind of grace. That way, you will have everything you need, always and in everything to provide more than enough for every kind of good work. We come this morning, the fourth Sunday in May of 2020, to preach we never closed. We never closed. We never closed. All right now. Waffle House. <laughs> Huddle House. McDonald's. 7 Eleven. Speedway. Shell, Walmart, no matter the holiday, rain, sleet, snow, sunshine, these businesses never close. And my brothers and my sisters, contrary to popular belief, the church is the exact same way. Now, yes, we've had to adjust the way we do church. Right. We've had to adjust our hours. We've had to adjust our interactions. We've had to adjust our attitudes. We realize in this day and time that life is precious. We now understand that time together is precious. We know that our blessings are precious. And can I tell you that our family and our friends are precious. Yes. The most important people in our lives. And so we understand that each day is precious. And so yeah, we've had to close the building. But can I tell you that the AME church started in a blacksmith shop. And as a matter of fact, we were in the middle of praying when we were told to get up from our posture of praying. And so we tried to reason and we asked for just a few more minutes in order to complete our prayers, but we were denied. And my brothers and my sisters, we didn't wait until we could build another building. We didn't go to the bank and ask alone and we decided we weren't going to beg anybody for space in their building but instead we took what God had blessed us with and made the best of it am I preaching to anybody and here this morning sometimes you gotta take a look at what you do have and stop focusing on what you don't have and go ahead and thank the Lord for the many blessings that he's already given you and stop complaining and stop talking about what we don't have but just be thankful that we have life yeah. itself and so when we started out we didn't have chandeliers we didn't have red carpet we didn't have purple pews with cushion we didn't have central heat or central air we didn't have indoor plumbing but can i tell you that when it came to praising the lord our mothers and our fathers and our grandparents and our foreparents were about their father's business weren't concerned about the things that we get ourselves all caught up and wrapped up in 
I'm trying to tell you that we never closed. And so in the text, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, encouraging them as they are preparing to be a blessing to others, preparing to give up themselves and give up their time and give up their tithe and give up their talent. Paul reminds us that God loves a cheerful giver. Y'all talk to me in here. Amen. Paul reminds us that God loves a cheerful giver. Not someone that feels forced into giving, but one that gives cheerfully that regardless of what we give or how much we give, when we give to the Lord, God will give us so much more. Don't focus on what you believe you're losing, but focus on how your cup is going to run over because you're giving to the Lord. And even in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this chaotic situation, can I tell y'all that it's all right for us to still give? It's all right for us to still be a blessing. It is all right for us to still lend a helping hand. Because the truth of the matter is we're all going through something right now. And my brothers and my sisters, I, what I love about the Lord is that God will make it so that we never lack for anything. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? And so regardless of what you see on CNN and regardless of what you see on Fox News and regardless of what you see on all of the networks, let me tell you my brothers and my sisters that we never closed. We may have exited the building, but we never closed. Right now. Our heart should still be in the right place and our spirit should still be in the right place and our mind should still be in the right place because we never closed. And so Paul lets us know that God has the power to provide you with more than enough of every kind of grace. So when you need the grace to keep on keeping on, God will provide it. When you need the grace to wipe the tears from your eyes, God will provide it. When you need the grace to get up in the morning and to get started on your way, God will provide. Can I tell you that I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth, but I never went to bed hungry. Having always had T-bone steak and ribeye, but I've always had a stomach full. Didn't always have a man riding a horse on my shirt, but I never went naked. Can I tell you that all that I have needed, all that I have wanted, God has provided. And it is because God never closes. Can I preach this to somebody? It's a building may be closed. It's a building may be shut down. But the God that we serve, he never closes. But well, Pastor, how do you know? Because 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, when I rolled over out of my sleep, my alarm clock had it went off. I know that it is the Lord talking. I know the Lord is talking. He's talking unto me. How do you know, Pastor, that the church of, we never closed. Over on Edisto Island, there be three, four, five of us to obey. But we woke up in the morning, refreshed, and sat down at the breakfast table. And mama gave us the best meal that we ever had. Might not have had the finest of things, but we always had what we needed. Do I have a witness in this place on this morning that even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of being laid off, in the midst of being furloughed, in the midst of your job closing, the job may have closed, the 
the church building may have closed, but the mighty God we serve never, 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 never closed. The same God has allowed us nine weeks of beautiful, perfect, showing up Sunday morning weather to come together in this parking lot to praise Oh, we never, we never, we never close. 24-7, 365. This year's a leap year. So 366 days. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord our God has given us more than we ever could count. Given us more than we ever could have imagined. Our Lord and our God, we can testify that we never, 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 that we never, never would have made it without you. Can I, can I, can I, can I get a witness at 468 Howell Road? Can I get a witness in your living room, on your job, in your car, wherever you may be, can somebody, can anybody, can everybody testify that we, the body of believers, that we who have been bought with a price, that we who love the Lord, not because of what he does for us, but because of what God allows us to do, can we testify that we never, never, we never, we never close. Early in the morning, we are praying. During the noonday hour, we are praying. Late at night, we are praying. Whether you say, Father, I stretch up my hands unto thee. Whether you say our Father, which art in heaven. Whether you say now I lay me down to sleep. Whether you simply say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for all, for all, 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 all. thank you. For me, my brothers and my sisters, I don't care about what comes out of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. I stop by as a living witness. I stop by as a testimony that lets you know that we have always been essential. We have always been important. We have always been necessary. But above all, we have never, 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 we've never, we've never closed. Don't take my word for it. Try my Jesus. Early in the morning, go ahead and try. Late at night, go ahead and try. Noonday hour, go ahead and try. Ah, ah. I done tried them, I done tried them, I done tried them, and I got news for you. He is, 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 he is he's alright. If you know, like I know, if you feel, like I feel, if the Lord continues to make a way, no way for you and 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 for you go ahead make some noise all over all over the parking lot make some noise all over your house
we never close. Just wanted to set the record straight that we never closed. Had to close the building. Had to make some adjustments. But the song says that this ain't no ordinary worship. And can I tell y'all that maybe we've been doing things the same old kind of way and getting the same old results for far too long. And so here we are. No excuses, no politics, no politics, no special seating. Huh? Want a good spot in the parking lot? You better get here early. <laughs> but all of the things that we thought we were doing, we were doing church. The Lord has stripped all of those things away from us. And so now it's time for the body of believers to be just that. The body of believers. Not just because it's Sunday morning at 1030. But simply because the Lord woke us up and started us on our way. We have to make up in our mind that we are the church. We don't sing it like we used to, but the song said, this little light of mine. Y'all remember that one? Y'all remember that? We used to say all in my neighborhood. We used to say everywhere I go. But now it seems like we only want the light to shine on Sundays. But my brothers and my sisters, can I tell you, that we don't operate just on Sunday. Because the God we serve doesn't operate just on Sunday. And so maybe this is news to somebody. That the church never closed. That God, our wonderful Savior, never closes. And if this is a revelation unto you, I got great news for you. You are tuning in or you are currently at the right place. Because the God we serve is ready to receive you. All you have to do is confess. Lord, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. And so as our praise and worship team comes back before us, we extend the invitation to you and 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 to you. Letting you know that now is the time. Don't let another moment, another minute, another hour pass you by before you have an opportunity to get right with the Lord. Listen, we were planning on saying the one thing, but we're going to just do a little spot of altercation to fit the moment. And we're going to keep it within the context of the song.
Heavenly Father, we come now with the thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you, dear God, for all that you have done. We thank you, dear God, for what you are doing right now. We thank you, dear God, for what we trust, believe, and know that you are going to do. Heavenly Father, we lift up those who do not know you as our Father, as our Lord, as our King, as our everything, dear God. Asking you, Heavenly Father, to touch them in a special way. Allow them to know and to understand that whenever he or she is ready, you are ready to receive them. Dear God, we lift up those whose relationship isn't as strong with you as it once was. Asking you, dear God, to strengthen that relationship and to get that relationship back where it needs to be. Dear God, continue to order our steps, continue to lead us and continue to guide us. And we will do all that we can to our, allow our light to shine brightly all the days of our lives. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we claim victory in the name of Jesus. This is our servant prayer. together for the Holy Spirit. For well, we understand the Holy Spirit is certainly here with us. I want to thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you. Those that are here in the parking lot and those that are viewing on social media, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Um, continue to be safe. Continue to be a good neighbor. Let's look out for one another and take care of each other. And if it is in the Lord's will, we look forward to seeing you on next Sunday. Amen. That's going to take us out of here. Mount Zion style. We didn't get to do this first Sunday and I, I apologize. It's my fault.